in today's episode let's know a little more about aromatics in an incense namaste everyone and welcome to om incense show with dj a show that helps you increase your incense quotient so if you are an incense enthusiast consider subscribing so today let's read a chapter from the book by carl f neil incense crafting and magical use of scents so let's read from that but before we go ahead i just like you to know that you might want to treat this episode as a podcast and let it play in the background while you carry on with your chores or you might just want to grab your favorite beverage and relax while i give you company so let's read chapter 2 page number 13 it says incense composition there are many different ways to look at incense composition i am certain that many traditional views of how incense is made might see the subject in a different light but this is a method that i have taught in workshops for nearly 20 years it works well and is very simple for the purpose of this book we'll look at combustible incense as made up of three physical parts aromatic base and binder there is also a liquid component usually water the final non-physical component is its energetic or magical aspect aromatic the aromatic is the part of the incense that primarily supplies the scent almost any plant resin or wood can be used as an aromatic as long as it has a distinct scent when it is being burned and you can be reasonably certain it is not harmful many incense blends that claim to have an ancient or mystical heritage although they may actually be very modern creations call for unpleasant materials as aromatics so i offer this important guide if you are making incense purely for enjoyment if it stinks you don't have to use it if you find an incense recipe that calls for patchouli and you don't like patchouli you don't have to use it if you find a recipe that calls for lavender flowers and you are allergic to lavender don't include it regardless of its magical properties the scents you desire does that mean you should only use aromatics that smell wonderful by themselves not at all it is sometimes surprising that an aromatic with a very strong or unusual scent alone may add well to another scent when used carefully many aromatics don't smell all that great when burned alone turmeric for example but can add a wonderful scent when used in combination with other aromatics Some aromatics are very strong and need to be used only in small quantities. Dragon's blood for example. They smell wonderful when used in the proper proportions but can be overwhelming if too much is used. Sometimes with careful blending you can even simulate one scent with a combination of totally unrelated scents. I have a blend with red cedar and myrrh that smells surprisingly like cinnamon. You should also consider that magically speaking incense does not need to smell good. There are even instances where bad smelling incense is desirable. Incense serves several purposes in magic. One important purpose is to shift us into a more appropriate frame of mind for the work at hand a magical state of mind if you will incense 
also serves as a kind of magical announcement that previously mundane space is now marked as sacred. For both of these purposes, incense need not smell wonderful. One way you can think of incense is as a cleaning tool. You can use a cleansing blend like sandalwood and sage that smells wonderful. It's like using a leaf blower to get rid of negative energy, driving it away. Nasty smelling incense like wormwood and sulfur can be used in the opposite way. The bad smell attracts negative energy like a sponge. As the nasty smell dissipates, the undesirable energy disappears along with the odor. You may also want to invoke a deity or spirit that would be drawn to a particular aromatic. That aromatic may not appeal to your nose, but if it is an offering for a deity, it isn't your nose that it needs to please. Scent is deeply linked with memory. Even unpleasant ones can bring positive memories to the surface. Although we generally make incense that smells wonderful, that isn't the best approach in every situation. To test an aromatic, always burn it. When you open a bag of frankincense, you are greeted with a wonderful rush of fragrance. But that's no guarantee of the scent you'll have when it is burnt. By the same token, if you open a bag of myrrh granules, you'll smell very little. Even in powder form, myrrh has very little scent. Once you add heat to it, however, you are greeted with a warm scent hidden in the resin. This is releasing the goddess in the smoke. Testing by burning is the only way to know with certainty how an aromatic will smell while being burnt in your incense. It's a good idea to test your incense blends before rolling too, but it certainly isn't mandatory. There are a couple of ways to burn your aromatics. The traditional way to do this is by burning the aromatic on charcoal. This is an excellent method. But don't forget the warnings about self-lighting charcoal. Use a high quality charcoal for your testing. This is the most common way that incense is burned in rituals. So the tools to do this are very easy to find or even make for that matter. If you don't want to use charcoal, you can also use an old pan or skillet. Don't forget, once used for incense, you should never use it for food again. Over a very low heat on your stove. Alternatively, you can hold a small strip of metal over a candle flame and test aromatics that way. Make certain that you hold the metal with pliers or some other tools. Otherwise, you could easily burn yourself on the hot metal. Once heated, add an aromatic to the metal. A less extreme approach is the use of an aroma lamp. These lamps normally have a dish filled with water and a candle held below. Water is put into the dish and then warmed by the candle. When oils are dropped into the warmed water, the scent is dispersed. You can easily adapt these lamps for incense burning and they are an excellent way to test your aromatics. Rather than adding water to the dish, line the bottom with a bit of aluminium foil. The foil protects the bottom of the dish from the aromatic. You don't want resins getting stuck to the bottom of your aroma lamp. You can then place aromatics on top of the foil and use the candle to gently heat them. This is also a great method for heating non-combustible incense. If the incense isn't warm enough, move the candle closer to the bottom of the dish. If it is too warm, 
which is more likely than move the candle farther away. If you become an incense fanatic, there are also electric incense heaters available with even more precise temperature controls. No matter which method you use, once the aromatic is burnt, remove it from the heat. You can leave ashes on charcoal and continue to heat them long after they have burnt. The resulting smell can be very unpleasant. You don't have to worry about that happening with your self-burning incense. Charcoal continues to supply heat to your incense even after it is completely burned while self-burning incense will go out as soon as the incense burns. Either scrape the material off the charcoal or remove it from the heat once it has burned. When making incense for use in ritual or for any magical purpose, you also have to consider the magical properties of all ingredients used in your incense. It complicates your task as an incense maker, but it also makes your rewards much greater. I'll discuss that in more detail later. Aromatics need not be expensive or incredibly rare. Although those can be considerations for incense made for some purposes. Spices from your kitchen, ingredients from your garden and materials you can gather yourself can all be used to make wonderful and powerful incense. You can invest an almost infinite amount of money into incense making. You can also spend a lifetime making incense while spending almost nothing on the adventure. Aromatics generally fall into one of the three categories. Resins, plant materials like leaves or flowers or woods. There are some aromatics that won't fit into these categories, but most will. Each individual type of aromatic will behave a little differently in your incense. So, it's important to understand the differences. And then he goes on to discuss about resins, plant materials and woods. So, we'll do all of those readings sometime later. For now, I think uh, that's enough. So, if you think somebody can learn something from this, share it with them. If you have any questions, any comments just write it in the comment section below and if you want the book i'll be providing the link of it in the description box below so you may check out the list description from there the link from there and so that's all for the episode today till we meet again next take very good care of yourself namaste